a friend. I think I know who you are. Would you give me your name, please? My name is Terry. Oh, Terry. Yes. It's quite a long time since last I came and spoke to you. Yes. Life has changed, as indeed all lives change. As one expands one's knowledge and experience, and one enters into new life on other spheres. Though we do not have, as you understand, the expression death, there is a form of death that is a passing from one sphere to another, a greater consciousness and awareness of new conditions and ideals. But all this is progression, gradual, assimilating knowledge and experience. There is no time, of course, to us as you understand it, and yet there is a, far, a form of realization of time. But it is so different that one cannot hope to express it in words or explain it. Mm -hmm. On the sphere in which I now exist, there is such tremendous opportunity, and there are great souls indeed who have progressed through sphere to sphere and experience to experience. We have the most wonderful form of existence that one can help to experience, and yet all the time one is experiencing this existence in life, one is ever conscious of the possibilities of that which still lies further ahead. It is impossible, I think, for any soul to describe the spheres that are more advanced. The spheres that are near the earth, because they are near the earth, can be depicted and described and no doubt have been described and depicted many times. But the souls who have gone into an atmosphere and condition far removed from earth can never help to recapture in words and expression to you that which they inhabit. But I can say that that which constitutes my life is full of beauty, full of colour, full indeed of every aspect of loveliness that words could depict or experience could experience. There is so much. There are great buildings, beautiful to behold. There are great cities in which all can be found that is good for the life of the individual. There are great theatres, of course, in which great plays are performed, great operas even are sung, great musicians compose, great works, so the great orchestras can play, and many can be blessed by music and the colour of which suffuses the whole auditorium during its performance. If only I could even just depict the colourings of this world, this place in which I find myself now, so far removed from your realisation. Mm -hmm. Colours beyond description, ever changing in their subtlety, and ever giving forth, as it were, an illu a luminosity and a beauty so far removed from material ideas that one cannot hope to recapture. Thinking as one must in comparison to the rainbow of the earth, one can see here, as it were, the colorings of innumerable rainbows with innumerable colorings far more vast and comprehensive in their spectrum. There is a diffused subtlety of light at times. There is never darkness. There is a kind of what you might call perhaps a twilight. And yet this is something which in itself is so unlike yours. There is a time for quietitude with us and rest. And yet there is never any need for rest or sleep, but a peacefulness that comes upon us when we feel the need. 
and in our energies which never seem to flag are ever present, ever calling upon us to do more, to experience more, to endeavor more. There is all the beauty and the magnificence of the countryside and the colorings of nature, but even more glorified and beautified than anything you know, there are all the conditions that one would expect of your life, but much more rarefied and more beautiful, much more vast in its comprehension and its experience. We have, of course, all the animals that constitute nature, but they are again in a more highly developed state of being. There are all the domestic animals that one has loved, but even with them there is the realization of that oneness with man's world and man's kingdom. There is the ability for the animal world to make itself understood and we to understand them. They do not have to convey in words because it is not necessary or possible possibly. But the point is that we know what they think, we know what they feel, and they know what we say unto them. They read our thoughts and they are able to understand all that we feel. That, I think, is one of the greatest things of this life, is that being completely and absolutely comprehended, not only by the human race similar to oneself, but to the lesser so-called kingdom of the animal and the birds and the freedom and the beauty. One cannot experience these things without feeling when one endeavors to depict and describe them so so lacking in oneself, so feeble in one's attempt to convey, and yet one endeavors. I can only say this to you, to all those who may listen, there is no need to fear the crossing from your word to this. It is the great adventure. It is the great awakening into a greater world of loveliness and beauty and freedom of thought. Truly this is a spiritual world, but not as man has depicted it. Indeed it is so, so different and so tremendously alive, so vital, so tremendously, as it were, so far removed from man's conception of things that it cannot be depicted or described. One can only feel it and know it and sense it. It is so vast and so beautiful. Do not fear that passing from your world to this. For whatever condition of life you may enter, no matter how lowly it may be, it will be a reflection of your world, but according to its condition, and according to your condition of passing, and particularly according to your development or lack of it, so you will find a condition that will apply to you and be best suited. And even though it may seem, perhaps to some, dark and drear according to the light, yet there is freedom to express and develop and evolve. Of course we know there are the lower spheres, the undeveloped spheres where the undeveloped souls go, but even so it is not a hell, as pictured by many who would have it so. There is no hell, only that which man himself creates by his own thinking and his own living. Here, that which man has created will change according to him, according to his striving and his uplifting himself from the darkness. Man dwells oft times in darkness of his own creating. As soon as he begins to desire the spark of life eternal, as soon as he is endeavoring to strive and uplift himself from the last sphere, so he will be helped and guided and given instruction and shown the path. No one need fear, for this is a world of love and truth.
true brotherhood and all who come will be shown the path and the way there is no need for fear for God truly is love and this is a world of love in which all who dwell are seeking to uplift themselves from stage to stage in evolution to a greater sense of the reality of the power of the love of the spirit. All is good if man will but seek it and find it. Man will progress from the depths to the height. All is here for man to experience the joy. It is truly the life of the spirit but it is a spiritual existence far removed from man's ideas and man's conception of things. For this is a world created by the thought and the beauty of expression of life that is so far removed from the material ideas and ideals. Be patient, but above all strive to overcome the worse self, endeavouring to see the clarity of vision, all that which is of God, truly of God, and cast aside all that which holds you back. Do not be afraid, for to have fear is a bad thing indeed. To have strength and faith and courage and to lift up your eyes to the beauty of the spheres. This shall set you free. You will find truly the path and the way. There is no need for man to fear the consequences of death. For death is the great door through which we all find the world of reality, the world of the spirit, the world everlasting. There is no death only that which seems so. The man himself has created death in ignorance and in foolishness. But one day he will find, as I and others have found, the way of truth, the way of life, the way of freedom, the path that leads to God. My blessings to all. Thank you. And to you both in particular. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. That lovely talk. That lovely was beautiful. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Mama.